Northside Aldi and a Walgreens closing is a gut punch to residents. We covered this topic from the standpoint of Walmart was also in this trifecta of closures, but this is what's going on in Minneapolis. Now, the reason I'm reading this story today is it comes right out and basically states, hey, this is due to shoplifting. So few articles that I have read, they all give, and I've read them and I've made fun of them. So few of the articles come right out and say, hey, this is due to shoplifting. We're going to check it out. Let's get into it. Let's see what's going on with the Aldis and Walgreens. Not Walmart so much. Aldis and Walgreens. Let's get into it. Here we go. Northside Aldi and Walgreens closing is a gut punch to residents. That's not good. Store closing, March 6, 2023. What a helpless feeling. You go into your store and you're like, ah, that sucks. Well, guess I better go find my, my next store. And it didn't sound... It did not sound like this was a shocker to the community. Any of these stores, it did not sound like this was a shocker. This was just kind of like, yeah, it sucks. And yeah, parking lot's full and Walmart and yeah, a lot of people are in there, but you know, they're closing it down. Huh? Weird, right? Patricia Bryant stepped out of the cab in front of Walgreens Pharmacy on West Broadway and was greeted by signs announcing its closing. After March 6, her cab rides get longer and more expensive. Sherry Brandt felt a similar blow when the Aldi on Penn Avenue North closed for good on February 12th. It had been an affordable choice and the soaring supermarket prices to feed her family of five. Food has gotten so expensive. I mean, just, I'm one guy, I live by myself, don't even have any pets. Just, I mean, I'm as bare bones. I don't even have like, House plants. I got no, I got nothing on the wall because I want to keep it clean in case in case I need to jet out of there. I want to be able to just put my house in the market by myself in the MLS and say, I'm out of here. Yeah, I want that option. So art and pets and all that stuff, I'm a no-go. I'm just like, nah, I don't. I do have two enormous refrigerators though. I mean, I find that because one didn't fit and I had to buy another one. So annoying. The news that North Minneapolis would lose a grocery store, pharmacy, and Walmart. Walmart, not so much. It all came in the same week. Could you imagine? Okay, I'm, oh, I'll just go. Oh, I won't go to Alt. Oh, I, Walgreens is no good. Oh, hmm, Walmart. Walmart's out too. Oof, this is not good. Minneapolis though. We defunded the police. We had riots. We burnt the city down and stores are leaving. Weird. Huh. That's a shocker, isn't it? While a shock that this this all happened in the same week, it was hardly surprising to some residents who see the closings as just two more cases, or three, including uh, Walmart, two more cases of disinvestment in their community. Now, you know, I, I see a lot of stuff where people talk about disinvestment. Well, yeah, but they it's not because they are just choosing. You got two equal choices. Well, I'm just going to screw Minneapolis. I, I just, I don't want to deal with Minneapolis. It's not really like that, right? It's more of, well, I can make money here or I can lose money in Minneapolis. Which are you going to choose? And that's what Walmart was, you know, basically stating they were doing. Hey, we got to call our losers. And unfortunately, Minneapolis as a whole right now is a loser. That's what the data is saying. That's not what I'm saying. That's what the data is saying, right? The closing of Walgreens leaves Minneapolis with one pharmacy inside Cub Foods um, at whatever. It's one of three remaining grocery stores that include North Market and So Low Grocery. Grocery. So what we're saying is, you know, this portion, North Minneapolis is becoming basically a food desert. You're going to have areas where there's just going to be no grocery store for, you know, a couple of mile radius, whatever it might be. It's a huge blow, said Minneapolis City Councilwoman Latricia Vita, whose Ward 4 covers North Minneapolis, north of Lowry Avenue. I mean, we have so many challenges already. And to have one around food, another essential, this is just so heartbreaking. I'm very sad to hear that Walgreens is closing. Our community cannot afford to keep taking big hits like these. But if businesses can't, if they they can't operate at a profit, then they will not be there. They you will not find businesses in in a city like Minneapolis. It's just it's basic economics, 
And yet the leadership in these types of cities tends to believe otherwise. Well, we'll just enact these policies and everything will be fine. This will be great. This is so progressive. This is going to make a lot of sense. And then boom, Aldi's gone. Walgreens gone. Walmart's gone. What happened? How did this go? Where, 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 this is a big blow to our community. Well, yeah, but you got a lot of shoplifting going. Oh, did I say the S word out loud? I did. Both Aldi and Walgreens were located on major bus, bus routes and were critical stops for residents without transportation. Neighborhood Facebook pages hosted pictures of specials on Aldi and its discounts helped shoppers whose budgets were otherwise pinched by soaring food prices. So what I talk a lot about here on News for Reasonable People is just being reasonable in general. And it sucks for these people who can't afford or having a hard time affording food, let alone all this other crap that we think that we need in our lives. They just can't afford food. Prices have gone up so much. Remember we had that, you know, hey, don't worry about the inflation. It's temporary. I mean, it's, it's, it's you know, it's only going to be here for just a little while. Don't worry. Inflation's going to, you know, pass over us. Yeah. Has that food gone down? Never seems to go down, does it? Just goes one way and that's up. All the executives told Vita the Penn Avenue locations did not fit plans underway nationwide for store expansion and remodeling. Vita saw the building owner was willing to work with the growing supermarket giant. Vita said the building owner was willing to work with the growing supermarket giant. Well... Here's the zinger. This is one of the few articles that have come right out and stated the obvious truth. Just the you know, blindingly obvious. Here's what's going on. Whereas everybody else is like, yeah, it's not, it doesn't fit our, you know, corporate profitability. Our goals are not being met. Well, the North News talked to an unnamed employee who didn't want to lose their job, who said that theft and an inability to attract people to job openings at the pharmacy were behind the closing. Huh. Interesting. People don't want to live in this community. They don't want to work in this community. Hmm. And you got a lot of shoplifting? Hmm. Yeah. See, now we're now we're just we're start, we're starting to just barely dig at the edges of of what's what's going on here. What's you know. And everybody knows the drill. When you've got shoplifting, you've got just basically, you know, rampant shoplifting. You've basically got lawlessness. You've got some drug addiction in there. You got all of these things that have been happening all across the country. You've had a rise in crime. But in cities where they've allowed, you know, homelessness to happen, where they allowed Black Lives Matter to just run rampant, along with Antifa, you know, like Portland and Minneapolis, just, hey, burn the sound down. It'll be fine. I'm sure we'll recover just good. Oh, we're losing all these Walgreens and Walmart. Mm, huh. Do you think there's, is there a connection here? Is there a common thread here? Not, yeah, I can't quite work that out, right? Other than me just, you know, munching my hands together. So the shoplifting. Right? You, you can't keep a store open if you're not making money. It's, it's super basic. In a written statement, a Walgreens spokesperson said, when faced with the difficult decision to close a particular location, this location here, several factors are taken into account, including our existing footprint of stores and dynamics of the local market and changes in the buying habits of our patients and customers. And, you know, there's that little thing about profitability way at the end, you know, of, of this information tagline way at the end. Yeah. You know, and we got to be able to make some money because otherwise our shareholders are going to say, what are you guys doing? And um, we're going to have to say, well, we just wanted to keep the store open to help folks out, you know, help brother out. Doesn't work like that, does it? No. Corporate America says, yeah, close them. They don't care. They need to make money. But then they, you know, they'll have the lip service of, well, after careful consideration, then the one, my personal favorite, and we should probably do some merch for this is, <clears throat> you know, we have really valued you as a store customer for years and years and years. And we still will. We hope that you will shop at these other stores that we're going to keep open 
not in your community, but in the surrounding communities, because man, they are less dangerous. I mean, they got less shootings, they got less car thefts, they got less robbery, they've got less shoplifting. And shoplifting is really the thing that we're concerned about because that whole thing with profitability. But we hope to have you as a consumer at those other stores, just not in your community. Or hey, check us out at Walmart.com. You know, that's how they end these these little speeches. It's not you. It's us. We're the ones that, you know, it's just about we're having to rework our strategy and stores staying open and all kinds of craziness. Patricia Bryant's routine for getting her prescriptions is now disrupted. Walgreens will automatically transfer prescriptions to its Robbinsdale store. You're going to have massive disruption because you're going to have all kinds of stuff that goes, meaning businesses. They're not going to stay open. They're not going to stay open in environments where everything's walking out that front door, right? Which I've covered a million times. But this article, this article comes right out and lays a sentence out there, which, um, you know, I, I, I give them credit. Hey, you said the quiet part out loud because the rest of corporate America is just saying, ah, it's not you, it's us. Shop elsewhere or online. But um, yeah, we got to shut your store down because, man, we are bleeding out some profits here. Got no profits because you guys are stealing them all. I wish they'd just say that, right? Hell no. We're not keeping that store open. We're closing that bad boy down. Man, we couldn't keep people from stealing there to save our lives. Even corporate agreed. Hey, we got to shut that bad boy down. I wish I wish there were you know news announcements like that. That would just be, that that, that to me is just more reasonable. You know what I mean? Just tell me the truth. Hey, shoplifting's out of control, but we can't have that. We got to glass, you know, glass over everything and pretend that Minneapolis is thriving community with, you know, a lot of positivity and things going in the right direction. And it's not, you know, corporate, it's, you know, it's, you know, we've got all these other criteria and unfortunately, yeah, it's sad, but we had to shut your store down. Sherry Brandt said that she is very budget conscious as the main shopper of her family, feeding three growing children is expensive. Her husband has a gluten intolerance and Aldi had a number of affordable gluten-free items. I think Aldi's a great store. It's got some off-brand stuff that you're like, ah, yeah, okay, all right, all right, all right, cheap enough, seems decent, let's give it a roll. I was very surprised and sad, Brandt said. I think especially with inflation and the cost of groceries going up, as a mom of young kids, it, it was just, I don't know how to feel like, oh man, another affordable option is gone. Well, across America, we are seeing these stores get shut down in areas where people looking for affordability can least afford it. So what you've got is you've got policy by city leadership that basically dictates, hey, shoplifting, it's anybody's fair game. And when you've got that and you're not convicting criminals of theft, if you're not convicting criminals of basically anything, and you've got an explosion in drug addiction, the whole fentanyl crisis going across the United States, then oftentimes that happens in these communities where they're shutting these stores down. It all works part and parcel, right? And big corporate, it just has profitability to look at and go, yes or no. Well, North Minneapolis, the word on the street was no go because everything's walking out that front door. It's being stolen. Enough of the goods are being stolen that they can no longer support the concept of this store staying open. Another one of the main things that, that I've been kind of seeing more and more is that stores are looking a little bit longer term and going, okay, can we retrofit this existing location so that we have more of the shoplifting, the loss prevention mitigation, meaning you've got a bunch of either technology or physical structure type stuff to try and prevent shoplifting. But some of the older stores, they're just not conducive for that. So I think that has been looked at as an option and you're hearing some hints of it. But if that's the case, then, you know, if they're going down that road and kind of reporting on, hey, this is what we're doing, then they're admitting Shoplifting is a major problem, even though everybody knows it. We all know it. It's not like you look at these locations and go, I wonder what's going on there. I wonder what is happening in that community. You, you already know, right? And if you don't already know, you can do a quick Google search of Yelp reviews, Google reviews, and shoplifting news stories. I do that all the time, shoplifting news stories. And then you see what pulls up. You'd be surprised just how many 
you know, in a community that has a shoplifting issue, how many news stories there are specifically for each of these stores. Oftentimes it'll be a couple of pages and that's just the major stuff that's hit, you know? Um, so this is not, this isn't corporate America just, you know, picking on the, the poor folks in the communities that can least afford it, but it, the optics are, and that's why you've got these corporate responses to shutting stores down. They don't want to appear like they're, you know, being racist or they're picking on a certain community, even though they're, <laughs> they're basically just leaving that community high and dry. You know, Walmart in Portland being the prime example of, yeah, you know what? We got to hit the exit stage left here. And that's what they did. Pulled out the last two, you know, Walmarts in Portland Incorporated. Just left them without any. You've got Walmarts in the surrounding community, like 45 of them. But, you know, Portland's a, a big, big area. And um, so now you've got very few. You've got none. And it's not like Walmart's picking on Portland. Portland, you know, has had a, a tough time with Walmart to, from the get-go. Putting in stores. Very difficult to port them. Now, now corporate at Walmart is saying, yeah, no go. You don't want, don't want to have, you know, have our stores in your city because your city is stealing too much of our crap. And we can't make a profit. It's pretty basic stuff, right? But then, you know, leadership is like, what is happening? We, we need to work with our fed, you know, city officials or state officials or federal officials. We need to work with everybody to ensure that the community members have the access that they need to the affordable groceries. It's like, Hey, cut down on the crime, cut down on the drugs, cut down on the shoplifting. And then you might see some stores say, Hey, you know what? Things are getting better. Maybe we stick around. But for right now, you got a trifecta in North Minneapolis that's saying, Got a wall, you know, Walgreens, uh, Walmart, and Aldi all saying, "Mm, not so much. We're out of here. We're going to ditch. And I can't blame them. And you know what? The shareholders are saying, good, because we don't want to lose money. That's not why we invest in your company. All right. That's it for me on this one. Thanks so much for being here. Love to have you subscribe. Hit that notification bell. Hit the like button. Share the content. If you've got somebody that you know that might appreciate this or, you know, might just think, hey, that guy really enjoys talking about Aldi and Walmart and Walgreens. Share it with that individual. I appreciate it. Thanks in advance. Catch up in the next one. Bye for now.